it's an annual conference now. And it tells a beautiful story in the Bible about a woman being free from bondage. And one of the reasons why I believe that certain things can catch on is because they touch on principles that we all believe in. They touch on things that we all hope for. They touch on things that, that, that we really um, have a desire for. And we in Americans, that we as Americans, as adult Americans, we love the concept of freedom. You know, uh, the, the, you know, the folks came from the, uh, I, I didn't want to say the original because the original was Native Americans, amen. <laughs> but <clears throat> they were people who came from Europe and they came here from seeking religious freedom, amen. And then there were other folks who were brought here as slaves and then they look at America as freedom because they were freed uh, 200 years after the, 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 the uh, country started in order to be free, okay? So we as Americans, we cherish freedom. So when you hear this concept of woman thou art loosed, we love the idea of someone who is who was chained up, someone who was restrained, someone who was beaten back, someone who was beaten down, being made free. It's one of the pivotal stories of the scripture, and we love to hear that. We in America, we love freedom. Uh, one of the problems that we have in our country is that uh, we have so much freedom that sometimes people are free to do bad things, <laughs> amen. One of the main reasons why uh, folks can go around and cost of the freedom, amen. And people who are free, they end up sometimes abusing freedom to hurt other people. They abuse freedom to hurt other people. So another principle that we've got to understand is that we all need strength to fight the good fight of faith. We all need strength to fight the good fight of faith. And Jesus sets this woman free in order, and, and he gives her the power, he empowers her to fight this good fight of faith. So you see this in this scripture as well. So this is why this, this, this concept, this principle took off in the 1990s, because woman thou art loose. You are freed from the things that held you back. You are freed from bondage. You are freed from those things that have been chaining you down and holding you down. Many of us are like the woman with the issue of blood. We may not have an issue of blood, but we all have some Goliath that we are battling with. We are looking to someone or something to help us. In truth, many of you here, and there's many people who come to church, that they don't come to church for a love of God. They come to church to be set free. They come to church to be set free from those things that hold them down in bondage. Many of us here, we're not coming for God. If we're honest, we're coming for an antidote. We're coming for an antidote for our weaknesses. So as you read that scripture, that is why the concept of woman thou art loose became so famous and it took off. But one thing we have to understand and, and it's just a subtle change that I would like you to think about. Could you turn to Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19? Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19. And this is our primary text. The previous was just a warm-up. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19. And I'll let uh, Minister Ayibe read that for us, amen, <laughs> when he gets there. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19. Amen. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. 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 So I share that scripture with you to understand I want you to understand something. You know, the word strength, how many people want to be strong today? 
Amen. Do you want to be strong? Lily, you want to be stronger? Amen. You want to get stronger when you grow up? Amen. Well, one thing we got to be, we have to understand, and, and Kim had this picture up for a reason. Um, in order for you to be stronger, you must, even though God has set you free from sin, he set you free from a lot of the evil that is out there, all of the evil that is out there. He sets you free from a life that is worthless. In order to truly receive the strength from God that you need to receive, you must be willing to be bound. You must be willing to be bound. And many of us, you know, I even had, I call it the Mars Hill drill, where I would say, do you want to have more strength? Then you need to get more faith. You get more faith by reading God's word. When you read God's word, your faith grows. And as your faith grows, you get the strength that you need to fight the good fight. But there's something that's, that's, that's not directly said in the old Mars Hill drills. We used to run through that in the book of Hebrews. Is that you get more strength from reading the word of God, but something happens when you read the word of God. You realize that in order to be stronger... You must be bound. And we who like to be free, we, Jesus sets us free and we're free indeed. And, and, and who, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. Oh, oh, we as Americans, oh, in America, everyone talks about freedom, 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 freedom. But one thing you have to realize as Americans, in order to be free, if you're going to accomplish anything, you must be bound. And that's what, what he's saying, Peter, upon this rock I built my church. And he talks about Peter, and, and, and he's saying, Peter, it ain't you that's the rock. That's where the Catholics have it all wrong. They think Peter is the rock. But if you study the scripture, Peter is not the rock. He, before that, Peter said, thou art the Christ. And upon the principle that Jesus is the Christ, that is the rock on which he builds his church. And as he builds his church, he establishes his kingdom. And he goes on in the next verse and he says, whatever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you allow God to bind, it has power. The word strength in the Latin is the word stingari. And that word strength, Sister Samika, means to bind. Things cannot be strong unless they are bound. And we have got to allow God in the freedom of Christ for him to bind us to make us stronger. But we don't like to hear that. Look, see, even Samika, she's looking at me all mean today. <laughs> Amen. Oh, what you talking about, Pastor Tony? <laughs> Amen. But in order to be strong, you must be bound. You have to be bound. So the problem with many Christians, and especially American Christians, why they're so weak, is the Lord sets us free, and we're like, we're free, we're free. The Lord has set us free, we're free, we're free, we're free. The Lord has set us free, but then the Lord says, you must be bound if you want to be enjoy this freedom. It comes with discipline, and the discipline has to, in order to be disciplined, you must be bound. You can't be free to do what you want to do. It's no longer thy will. Amen. It's no longer your will. It's the will of the Father. And that is binding. You know, I heard this one person, uh, Pastor Ellis, was given a sermon once. And he was given a sermon. Oh, he would have given a sermon. I'm sorry. Uh, my pastor, Pastor Ellis, was given a class. And in that class, he was talking about that he used to be known as a drunk. You know, he used to always drink. When he was in the world, he was a drunk. And he was always known as this alcoholic. So, and he was the main drinker in college. So what Pastor Ellis did is when he went to his reunion, his 20 or 30 year reunion, he went and he would not even drink water. And he went the whole night of the reunion and he did not, because he didn't want anyone to think that if he had water in his hand, They'd be thinking, oh, Clyde, I know you got something up in there. You slid yourself a little something, something. So he didn't even go without water. And he says, I, I go through great steps to not even have the appearance of sin for Christ. And the point of this is the bondage that we are 
in Christ now is a bondage that's voluntary and it's in love. And it's not done, it's not done compulsory. It's not, it's not being done because you're forced to. The bondage that you are now in is because you love. And you do that bondage so that you can set other people free. There was a woman in, 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 in America in the 1800s, and her name was Harriet Tubman. And Harriet Tubman, she, she could have easily gone up north, developed a skill and a trade, and just forgotten about all the people in the south that were in slavery. But she didn't. She was bound by love. And because she was bound by love, Harriet Tubman sneaked back across the border into the south and continued to start the Underground Railroad. So she was not bound by, she was not forced to do that, but she binded herself because she wanted others to be free. We need to understand if we want to be strong, how many people want to be strong? Amen? Now here's my other question. How many people are willing to be bound by the Lord? Amen? Now you say that. Amen? <laughs> you say that. Amen. But when, when you say that, that, you have to realize that when he begins to bind you, that many of us are like, oh, Lord, get off of me. <laughs> the Lord, oh, Lord, I don't know about this. There is an African proverb that says, sticks in a bundle cannot be broken. Spider webs united can tie up a lion. Amen. Understanding this, that when you tie up these things, and when you make everything come together, it doesn't have the freedom that it used to have when it was separated. But when it was separated, it did not have the what? Strength. It did not have the strength. We use this picture because this man is an athlete going to go and run a race. But his ligament had to be tied. To prevent further injury. The same thing is true in the spirit. The athlete binds his joints so that he or she may run the race or fight the fight without injury. The dancer has his feet bound. The boxer has his hands bound. The injured must be bound in order to be healed. You don't have to turn there before your notes. Read Luke chapter 10, 34. It is the, don't turn there, don't turn there, because we're not going to keep moving. We're going to keep it moving. But in, 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 in the story of the Good Samaritan, what did the Samaritan do for the man who was beaten up and beaten down? He bound his injuries. My mother has diabetes and has a bad injury in her foot and has and has actually infection in her foot, and now her feet are bound. In, in order for life, for anything powerful to be done, in all aspects of your life, if there's a part of your life that is not strong, it's because you are not bound. And you are, are loose, and you're free. And the problem is, we've been talking about women that are loose, but God has sent me to, to you today to say, woman, thou should be <laughs> bound. 